Coming in at number 10, Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa is being sued for a second time over the song Levitating. Previously, a band called Article Sound System filed a lawsuit against the British pop star, and this group claimed that Dua had stolen the catchy tune from their own reggae song called Live Your Life. Then, as per The Hollywood Reporter, two more songwriters, L. Russell Brown and Sandy Lindner, also filed copyright lawsuits against Dua, claiming that she copied their songs as well to create Levitating. They filed a complaint in a Manhattan federal court and accused Dua of copying their 1979 song Wiggle and Giggle All Night, as well as their 1980 song titled Don Diablo. Apparently, the opening melody to Levitating is an exact duplicate of the melody to their songs. Lawyers for Brown and Lindsner wrote in their complaint, Defendants have levitated away plaintiff's intellectual property. Plaintiffs bring suit so that defendants cannot wiggle out of their willful infringement. And so far, neither Dua nor anyone from her team have commented publicly on either of these lawsuits. But before we jump into our next point, make sure you tap that like button to show some love to the channel. Coming in at number 9, Simon Levine. Netflix's Tinder swindler Simon Levine was being sued by the Diamond Air family that he was impersonating. According to a lawyer for the family, charges were filed in Israel against Simon, saying that justice must be served for the malice that he brought to the Levine name. If you watch the documentary, then you'll note that Simon was accused already of pretending to be a member of the Levine family, in order to attract women on Tinder, that is. Then he would allegedly scam these women out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. In a statement made to E! News, check Yet Lviv, who is the daughter of Lev Lviv and true heiress to the family fortune, said that there would be a multi-million dollar lawsuit in the works. This lawsuit aims to get Shaman Hayat to face justice and get the sentence he deserves. In the statement, she goes on to say, Shaman Hayat is a fraud who stole our family's identity and has tried to exploit our good name to con victims out of millions of dollars. He has no relation to the Lviv family and has no affiliation with our company LLD Diamonds. I am relieved that his real identity and actions have been globally exposed, and hopefully this will bring an end to his unscrupulous actions. Coming to number the Ace Family. The Ace Family on YouTube have been trying to fight off rumors of bankruptcy for a while now, and it's probably because of how much they're being sued for. Austin, for example, was sued by the media company Live by Live, and a lawyer for them told the press that Austin's boxing event was built on a stack of lies, and as a result, they were seeking $100 million in their lawsuit for failure to fulfill contracts. Then Catherine was being sued by TBL Cosmetics, which is a manufacturing company that helped her launch her brand 1212 Gateway. This one is a civil complaint, but the suit alleged that she tried to stage a coup of the skincare brand to stop TBL from profiting off of 1212 Gateway. Now, is Live by Live going to get $100 million out of Austin McBroom? Probably not. My guess is that this countersuit is their way of defending their own brand. Because when you think about it, Austin can just put out a vlog or call up the Hollywood Fix and begin spinning whatever narrative that he wants to help his image best. But when we get down to brass tacks, the truth will be exposed in court. And that countersuit is just a way of drawing him back in to admit where he went wrong, i.e. promising fighters and performers money that he never had. Coming to number 7, Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle was sued by her half-sister Samantha over that Oprah Winfrey interview that she did a while back with Harry. Samantha claimed that the whole rags to royalty narrative that this interview had was enough for her to claim defamation, citing that the Duchess did not grow up in poverty like she wanted everyone to believe. According to reports, she is being sued for $75,000. In court documents obtained by the Daily Mail, Samantha said that Meghan had launched a premeditated campaign to destroy her and her family's reputation. She claimed that by doing this interview, she was able to ruin their credibility. Samantha goes on to suggest that this was done so. They could not interfere with or contradict the false narrative and fairy tale life story concocted by the defendant. She also alleged that Megan had lied about raising herself up from poverty by taking low paying jobs at 13 to help make ends meet. On top of coming after Megan, Samantha also launched an attack on her sister's friend and biographer Omid Scobie, calling the book Finding Freedom about Megan Harry a book of lies. Coming to number 6, Linda Evangelista. Supermodel Linda Evangelista stepped back into the public eye after spending the last five years of her life in hiding. During an exclusive interview with People Magazine, Linda opened up about having a cosmetic procedure that she said left her brutally disfigured. Linda was once one of the most photographed people in the world, but she has been hiding out until she was ready to share her story. The model spoke about the emotional and physical pain that has consumed her life after she claims cool sculpting left her permanently disfigured. Cool sculpting has become a popular and FDA approved fat freezing procedure that is promoted as being a non invasive alternative to liposuction. In September, Linda even filed a lawsuit against Cool Sculpting's parent company called Zeltec Aesthetics for $50 million in damages. She alleged that she has not been able to work after undergoing seven sessions of Cool Sculpting in a dermatologist's office from August 2015 to February 2016. She also told People Magazine, I love being up on the catwalks. Now I dread running into someone I know. I can't live like this anymore in hiding and shame. I just couldn't live in this pain any longer. I'm willing to finally speak. Coming to number five, Usher. Usher is a successful American R&B pop star 
star who first began making music at the age of 15. Now at 43 years old, he has quite the illustrious career and whether you're a fan of his or not, you definitely will recognize his influence. I mean, he was the main reason Justin Bieber even rose to fame in the first place. Although sadly in 2017, he became famous for a much different reason. Usher had a lawsuit filed against him by three fans who claimed that the singer gave them all herpes. Although he never made a public statement about any of this in regards to the lawsuit, he is known by some for being accused of this before. Previously in 2012, an unnamed plaintiff sued Usher for a similar matter for which he settled out of court for an amount of $1.2 million. And if that doesn't scream guilt, I don't know what else does. Coming number four, Britney Spears. Britney Spears recently deleted an Instagram post where she said that she would be gearing up for a legal battle with her former business managers at TriStar Entertainment. And if you remember, this company was very involved when it came to Britney's conservatorship. However, in addition to that, Britney also accused Lou Taylor and Robin Greenhill of trying to end her life. In the last part of her deleted Instagram post though, she writes, nobody else would have lived through what they did to me. I lived through all of it and I remember all of it. P.S. They got away with all of it and I'm here to warn them every day of my precious life. And after Britney alleged that Lou Taylor and TriStar had major involvement in putting her in this conservatorship, the company denied this and told the courts that quote, no one at TriStar has ever had any control over Miss Spears' medical treatment. No one at TriStar has ever suggested monitoring Miss Spears' electronic communications. No one at TriStar has ever had authority to approve security protocols. No one at TriStar is aware of any hidden electronic surveillance device placed in Miss Spears' bedroom. No one at TriStar has ever received any compensation related to Miss Spears or her estate that is not accurately reflected in the accountings filed or to be filed in this case. In number three, Jay-Z. Jay-Z found himself on the receiving end of a $68 million lawsuit from a perfume company in 2016 after being accused of failing to uphold his end of a 2012 contract to promote his fragrance with them. Recently, a court ruled that the company should be liable to pay royalties to Jay-Z in its civil case that went to trial last year. After a three-week trial that saw Jay-Z taking the witness stand, a jury ended up letting him off the hook for this alleged contract breach. He then filed a counterclaim against the company seeking $4.5 million in alleged unpaid royalties. However, the jury also found that the company should not have to pay damages to Jay-Z. In number two, Alex Baldwin. Baldwin found himself defending his past record of safety when it comes to having firearms on set, saying that throughout his entire career, he has always trusted the prop experts on his films to make sure that the sets were safe. Despite how Alec feels about the situation and what he believes should have happened though, it was announced on February 15th that Helena's husband Matthew would be suing Alec, alongside many others that were also involved with this incident. The animated video demonstration also alleges that Baldwin was a mere four feet away from the crew when the weapon went off. The crew were in a direct line of fire and should have had at least protective glass or other personal protective equipment. Plus, the camera should have been remotely operated if they knew that a weapon was going to be aimed in that direction. And this lawsuit is going to be a massive one because these are only a few of the mistakes that we know about and it's already a lot. There was an extreme amount of negligence on this set when it came to safety and now they are paying the price for that. Coming in at our number one spot, Travis Scott. If you recall, we did a video about how Travis Scott was facing $750 million in lawsuits for Astroworld. Believe it or not, but that number was added to a whopping $2 billion lawsuit. A Texas-based attorney filed a $2 billion lawsuit against Travis Scott, Live Nation, and others involved in organizing the festival. Attorney Thomas J. Henry filed the lawsuit, and the list of defendants may be long, but the people he was hired to represent is even longer. The defendants listed in the suit include Travis Scott, Drake, Apple Music, and NRG Stadium, but on the other side, he is representing 280 82 Astroworld concert goers. In a statement to the press regarding this massive lawsuit, Henry said, the defendants stood to make an exorbitant amount of money off of this event, and they still chose to cut corners, cut costs, and put attendees at risk. Adding, my clients want to ensure the defendants are held responsible for their actions, and they want to send the message to all performers, event organizers, and promoters that what happened at Astroworld cannot happen again. Never since filing this massive lawsuit, this attorney claims that an additional 120 people have reached out to him looking for representation in this case. All right, starting off this list of number Number 10, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was sued for a reason you probably won't believe. I know I didn't. Basically, he was sued by someone else because that other person looked like him. In 2006, a man named Alan Ray Heckard filed a lawsuit against both the former NBA star and Nike for increasing Michael Jordan's face and recognizability, with Heckard claiming that his life had been changed negatively because he looked like Michael Jordan. But if you actually look at pictures of the guy, he doesn't even look like Michael in the first place, to be honest. But this lookalike thought that looking like Michael Jordan was so bad 
that he deserved $832 million. With that money coming half from Jordan and half from Nike. And when asked by CBS how he got to that number, he replied, well, if you figure with my age and you multiply that by seven and uh, turn it around, and uh, I figure that's what it all boils down to. <laughs> with a man dropping the suit months later, probably after realizing he didn't have a case whatsoever. And at number nine, Sean P. Diddy Combs. The person who ended up suing Diddy might have actually broke some sort of record for the highest amount because she wanted to sue him for one trillion dollars. Valerie Turks filed this one trillion dollar lawsuit against Sean P. Diddy Combs in 2011 with her claiming that Combs had a child with her 24 years earlier and also stole a casino chip that was worth quote a hundred zillions of dollars according to the Guardian. But as you can probably tell from what was said earlier, this woman was, you know, a little off her rocker. <laughs> and she also claimed that he was the person behind the September 11 attacks on the World Trade Center along with Kim Porter and Rodney King with the one trillion dollar sum coming from 900 billion in child support and the other 100 billion for lost wages. But considering that made absolutely no sense, it was quickly thrown out. And at number eight, Skrillex. Concerts can be a pretty dangerous place, especially if it's a floor concert and you're caught up in the mosh pit. And at one of Skrillex's concerts back in 2014, a fan got injured at a concert and sued him because of it. Jennifer Frazzle was in a concert audience when Skrillex leapt off a DJ table onto the floor and then allegedly landed right on her. And that interaction allegedly caused her to have a stroke. And even though Skrillex's lawyer provided a video that showed that Skrillex had no contact with the woman, the jury actually ruled in the woman's favor and Frazzle was awarded a cool $4.5 million in damages, with the payment being from Skrillex himself, his tour company, and the venue. But the performer was actually a really good sport about it and happily paid the money, saying his fans are his number one priority. And at number seven, Justin Bieber. Back in the day, the Beeps was pretty unproblematic and was best known for his swoop hair and dreamy eyes. And as we've seen with some other celebrities, the Beeps can definitely pull a crowd of adoring women. And that's exactly what he did in Oregon in 2010. He was performing in a stadium, and all his fans were screaming at the top of the their lungs. I mean, what else can you expect at a Justin Bieber concert? But it got worse when Bieber decided to perform in a metal-shaped heart above the crowd. This is when Stacey Wilson Betts decided to sue Bieber because she damaged her ears because of the concert. Betts was demanding $9 million because of the damage because she now suffers from tinnitus, which causes a constant pulsing, whooshing sound that makes it hard to sleep. According to Betts, Bieber whipped the crowd of girls into such a frenzy with his performing that their screams reached quote, unsafe levels, echoing off the metal heart and causing a sound blast that permanently damaged her hearing. But the case was dismissed because seriously, like, come on, you're at a concert. Like, what can these people expect? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to label this a Karen. Like, you're at a concert, what do you expect? <laughs> and, it, and it's Justin Bieber, like, come on. And number six, Miley Cyrus. Miley got involved in a scandal when she was younger that was so bad that she got sued because of it. It started with Miley and a large group of her friends posing for a photo in 2009, with Miley making sort of a Chinese eyes face, pulling her eyes back with her hands along with others in the group doing it too. And this photo was so offensive to one woman, she tried suing Miley because of it. A Los Angeles woman, Lucy J. Kim, claimed that she was personally damaged by the discriminatory photo and sued Miley for four billion dollars. And that money was not just for her, but for the over one million Asian Pacific Islanders living in LA. And that's not humanly possible because Miley was only worth 160 million dollars at the time. And obviously the lawsuit ended up being dismissed. How about number five, Snoop Dogg. Richard Monroe Jr., a Snoop Dogg fan, sued him after the fan decided to run up to the stage for a hug from Snoop during a concert. But instead of a hug, he was met with a tackle from security guards. But also, I mean, what does this guy expect for rushing up to the stage, like that's what security guards are for? Because of the force from the guards trying to protect Snoop, Monroe was knocked out and dragged off stage. He woke up a little while later, backstage with his face swollen and allegedly lying in a pool of his own blood. After that incident, Monroe sued for $22 million in damages. And even though he won the case, he was only paid out $500,000 after the jury determined that Snoop was not entirely to blame for the incident. But I don't think Monroe was all that mad about it. Because of the court hearings, he saw Snoop multiple times over the span of a few months. And he felt closer than ever to the star. In at number four, Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi is one of the greatest American musicians of all time and is of course wildly successful. But there was someone who believed that they were a key part in all his fame and sued him for a piece of the pie. According to Samuel Bartley Steele, Bon Jovi stole one of his songs. In 2007, after releasing his song, I Love This Town, Bon Jovi was hit with a $4 billion lawsuit from Steele, who claimed that he took one of Steele's songs and passed it off to the record label as his own. But Steele didn't have a case whatsoever and the musical expert that he brought to court to testify about the 
song even disagreed and said that the songs were actually not very similar at all. And the only similarity is the title. And even though the lawsuit was dismissed, Steele didn't give up and appealed the decision, although I'm doubting that it went anywhere. And at number three, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is a superstar, and when you have that kind of fame, you're bound to get the attention of some crazy fans. And Taylor did in 2015, when a fan was so obsessed with getting her attention that he ended up taking her to court. It all started when the fan, Russell Greer, wrote a song for Taylor called, I Get You Taylor Swift, and sent it around to her agents for Taylor to hear. When that didn't work, he sent it to Swift's family, trying to get them to give her the song. And when that all failed, he then sued her for $7,000 for neglect of duty and emotional distress. But of course, that that lawsuit was quickly dismissed, and after Taylor and her family called him out for being invasive and troubling, it only got worse, with Greer suing Taylor for a second time for $50 million in another attempt to get her attention. Again, the lawsuit was thrown out, but that shows the kinds of things that big stars have to deal with. And at number two, Ariana Grande. Ariana got in trouble for something that a lot of celebrities get in hot water for, and that's for posting paparazzi photos of themselves on their Instagram pages. Ariana is not the first and will probably not be the last person to get in trouble for this reason, but in 20 2018, she got sued after she posted a photo of herself on her Instagram, but she was forced to delete it quickly after she received a lawsuit. Photographer Robert Barbara filed a lawsuit against the Thank You Next singer because she didn't license the two photos she posted on Instagram in August of 2018. Forbes reported. And she was suing Grande for up to $25,000 for each picture or the profits that singer made on it. And there were four pictures that were posted, with the documents reading, quote, Grande infringed Barbara's copyright in the photographs by reproducing and publicly displaying the photographs on the Instagram page. Grande is not and has never been licensed or otherwise authorized to reproduce, publicly display, distribute, and or use the photographs. Ariana ended up settling the lawsuit out of court. And at number one, Future. Future is actually the only person on this list that was sued by another celebrity and that was his ex, Ciara. Ciara sued Future for $15 million, TMZ reports, with the lawsuit claiming that Future made slanderous comments about Ciara and their son on Twitter. And in addition to the money, Ciara wants Future to delete specific tweets and be barred from saying anything publicly about their family in the future. And Future has definitely tweeted out a lot about Ciara, hinting about the breakup and shading her new boyfriend. She's also shown issue with how many of his song lyrics are allegedly about her. But that is a difficult territory to sue for, and obviously, as we know, tons of musicians take inspiration from real life. Future countersuit, claiming that he couldn't have harmed her reputation because her career was failing. Then after some more back and forth, Ciara ended up dropping the suit. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Nicki Minaj and Tracy Chapman. Last year on January 7th, 2021, a long battle between Nicki Minaj and Tracy Chapman finally came to a close. The pair's legal battle started in 2018 over Nicki's unauthorized sampling of Tracy's song, Baby Can I Hold You. Nicki had publicly claimed all the way back in 2018 that she had no idea that she had sampled Tracy's song and begged the singer to give her rights to it so that she could move forward with her anticipation anticipated album release without delays, but Tracy refused. Years later, the suit would finally come to a settlement with Minaj paying $450,000 in order to settle it. After the settlement, Chapman could be quoted as saying, quote, I'm glad to have this matter resolved and grateful for this legal outcome, which affirms that artists' rights are protected by law and should be respected by other artists. I was asked in this situation numerous times for permission to use my song. In each instance, politely and in a timely manner, I unequivocally said no. Apparently, Miss Minaj chose not to hear and used my composition despite my clear and express intentions. Despite the fact that Nicki took the song off of her album before its release, a leaked version still managed to make its way around the internet, but with the settlement, any further circulation of the song is banned. In our number nine spot today, we have Taylor Swift and David Mueller. Not so much of a celebrity, but rather a public figure, David Mueller David Mueller is a former radio DJ who was exposed and lost his job after inappropriately touching Taylor Swift at a meet and greet in 2013. He claimed that the contact wasn't intentional, but Swift said in a testimony, quote, it was a definite grab, a very long grab. David then tried to sue Swift due to his job loss, which led Taylor to counter sue for just $1. She said this was because she wanted the trial to be an example for other women. During the trial, David's lawyer asked Taylor how she felt about him losing his job over the encounter, to which she responded, quote, I'm not going to allow you or your client to make me feel in any way that this is my fault. Here we are years later, and I'm being blamed for the unfortunate events of his life that are the product of his decisions, not mine. In the end, Taylor went on to 
win the suit back in 2017. In our number eight spot today, we have Cardi B and Tasha K. Earlier this year, a federal jury awarded rapper Cardi B about $4 million in a lawsuit she brought against a celebrity gossip blogger who had posted videos referencing Cardi B in 2018. The series of videos claimed that Cardi B was a sex worker, that she had contracted sexually transmitted infections, and that she used illicit substances. Cardi B sued the blogger in 2019 for posting over 20 videos that spread, quote, malicious rumors, according to the lawsuit. In the end, the jury found the blogger, who goes by Tasha K, liable on two counts of slander and one count of libel and one count of invasion of privacy. Kind of ironic considering the title of Cardi's debut album. In our number seven spot today, we have Britney and Jamie Lynn Spears. One of the biggest celebrity court cases in the last few years was Britney Spears and her fight to get out from her conservatorship. Now that that has happened, that doesn't mean the court dates are yet over. This lawsuit hasn't quite been enacted yet, but it's definitely and very publicly been threatened. In the last few years, Britney has been vocal of her feelings regarding sister Jamie Lynn and how she believes she is just trying to profit off of her fortune. Now that Britney is free to be in charge of her own life, she has begun to threaten to sue Jamie Lynn if she continues to speak about her publicly. This isn't necessarily a surprise considering the two have had a rocky relationship for many years, but things have certainly escalated in the last few. Like I mentioned, this isn't yet an official lawsuit, but it's one that Britney herself has said might be on the way. In our number six spot today, we have Nicolas Cage and Kathleen Turner. In 2008, actress Kathleen Turner released a memoir titled Send Yourself Roses. In this book, she made quite a bizarre statement when she claimed that Nicolas Cage, who she had worked with back in 1986, she claimed that he had been arrested for driving under the influence and that he had also stolen a dog. It's such a random mix of things and such a weird thing to make up, so of course many people went on to take this story as the truth. This led to Nicholas filing a libel case in the UK against not only Kathleen, but also her publisher and a newspaper that had run an excerpt of the memoir. In the end, the defendants admitted to their wrongdoing and they apologized for their actions. Actions. They also paid the legal fees for Nicolas Cage and then went on to make a donation to charity. In our number five spot today, we have Polo v. Polo. Not necessarily two celebrities, but instead a versus match of the head of a large fashion company against a magazine dedicated to a sport. This is one of the more bizarre lawsuits on today's list. Polo is the name of a sport and the name of a magazine that is dedicated to it. Polo Ralph Lauren, on the other hand, is the high-end but casual clothing line that is designed to sort of allude to this sport. For 22 years, the sport, the magazine, and Polo Ralph Lauren could all exist in perfect harmony, but that changed in 1997. Polo Magazine had a bit of a switch up in their business model and went for more of a focus on the elite lifestyle of polo players rather than the actual sport itself. This led to Ralph Lauren being worried that this was going to sort of hijack the image he was trying to create for his polo brand, so he sued. Ralph Lauren sued the Texas-based publisher, claiming that the magazine had no right to use the word polo, and in 1999, a Dallas court ruled in favor of the designer, and the magazine ceased publication. This was, however, reversed in 2001 upon an appeal. Polo magazine was allowed to continue on, but they just added a small disclaimer that they are in fact not affiliated with Polo Ralph Lauren. In our number four spot today, we have Mariah Carey and Mary Carey. Mary Carey was an adult film star who, in 2006, Mariah Carey felt had a bit too similar of a name to her own. Mariah sued Mary because she felt as though her stage name was just a bit too similar to the singer's, and she said that she felt as though this similarity would ruin her image. Surprisingly, a judge agreed with Mariah, and in 2007 filing, a judge ruled that Mary Carey was no longer legally allowed to go by that name, and she would have to find another. What do you guys think? Do you agree with this filing and decision, or do you think that this one went a bit too far? In our number three spot today, we have Sofia Vergara and Nick Loeb. Sofia Vergara was struck with quite a case in 2015 when her ex, Nick Loeb, sued her for custody of two female embryos that the couple had frozen in 2013. On Sofia's side, she argued that both parties agreed that the embryos would not be implanted without consent on both sides, but Nick was claiming that he had always intended to see the embryos to 
full term and that he would waive any of her parental obligations. In the end, this case was dismissed, but Nick didn't give up there. Instead, he decided to refile again in 2017, but this time in Louisiana. This is thought to be because there are more strict laws in that state in reference to embryos, but that has never been confirmed. A judge again dismissed the case, this time on the grounds that since the embryos were created in California, Louisiana courts had absolutely no sway. In our number two spot today, we have Kesha and Dr. Luke. This is one long timeline of many, many lawsuits between these two. It's a long, sad story, but the most notable of all of the suits took place in October of 2014, when Kesha claimed that the music producer had horribly her twice while also using his position to quote intimidate and torment her. Since that suit, there have been many more attempts by Kesha to get out of her contract with both the producer as well as Sony Music. She even claimed that Sony was aware of the things she was enduring but chose not to act on it. She is releasing new music under her contract, but that doesn't mean the court filings are over yet. They are currently still ongoing. In our number one spot today, we have FKA Twigs and Shia LaBeouf. In December of 2020, the New York Times revealed that musician FKA Twigs had filed a lawsuit against their ex, actor Shia LaBeouf. The lawsuit listed several horrible things that they alleged that they endured over the course of the relationship, as well as the fears they presented them with and the lasting distress that it all caused. They described the emotional, psychological, and physical pain that they went through, and them coming forward also led to Carolyn Foe, who had also previously dated the actor, speaking about her similar experiences as well. Both Twigs and Carolyn have described having small disagreements that turned into all night fights, depriving them of sleep, the rules they felt as though they were made to adhere by, and just their general feelings of uncomfortability while in these relationships. 